Some people's hair can't lock up. Some people can't get dreadlocks. Locks are smelly and stinky. Yeah, you can't comb out locks. It's a permanent hairstyle and you can't undo it. I've done twisting with gel on my hair. I've done crochet hooking on my hair. I've done interlocking on my hair. I've done palm rolling on my hair. I've done sponge rub on my hair. So just wait until you see my hair in a year from now. It's gonna be crazy. It's gonna look nice. I've had my dreadlocks for two years and believe it or not, the cons have actually outweighed the pros. And with this journey, I found out that there's a lot of myths that are just simply not true about dreadlocks. So let's start out with my list of pros and then we'll get into the longer list of cons. Pro number one is that you finally have the hairstyle that you've really been dreaming for. I've wanted dreadlocks for as long as I can remember and I remember the first set of locks that I got, I was like, finally, I can actually do it because for the longest time, I've went to people that had supposedly did dreadlocks, but they seen my hair and said that my hair won't lock up. And I'm sure this has happened to you guys as well. But I mean, this is just proof that my hair can lock up. It just takes knowing how to properly do it. But that feeling of finally creating the locks that you've always wanted is honestly one of the best feelings you can have. And just the time and effort that you put into them really pays off. And the second pro actually comes right after the first one with the journey. The journey is extremely fun because you get to try different hairstyles. You can even try cutting some of your hair to do like a high top fade or a taper fade. Like with me, for instance, on this set of locks, I do have a taper fade. It's not fresh. Um, I do have a tapered hairline, which I didn't have on my original set of locks. So it's just cool experimenting and trying new things because like if you've never had locks before, you experience something brand new. Locks are way different than hair that isn't locked up. Like even if you do different hairstyles like braids or two strand twists outside of locks, it's still completely different. Another pro is that locks are extremely easy to manage after they have fully matured. So with having these locks for two years, one thing I found is on the second year, it's literally just wake up, and start my day, not have to focus on doing my hair. Like I don't wash my hair every single day. I wash it maybe once every two weeks. And that's just how my scalp is adjusted. Some people wash their hair every single day, which I actually used to, but just find a frequency that works best for you. You don't have to naturally wash your hair every single day. It's literally just wake up and go. You don't have to style your hair if you don't want to. Um, you can simply pull it up if it's long enough. And that's one thing I really like about the full set of locks because I used to have a high top fade with locks. I like the full set because I think it just looks better with hairstyles, even when you're just simply pulling it up into a pineapple top or even just a bun in the back, it just looks better. Are you tired of using mediocre dreadlock products that leave your hair feeling dry and lifeless? Try greatlocks.com dreadlock products, specially formulated to nourish and maintain your locks, leaving them looking and feeling healthy and strong. From shampoo and oil to locking gel and crochet hooks, greatlocks.com has everything you need to take care of your dreadlocks. Give your dreadlocks the care they deserve. Try greatlocks.com dreadlock products today. And my last pro, I know it's a short list, is that it makes you look unique. Everyone's dreadlocks turn out different. And obviously just having dreadlocks in general makes you a little bit more unique than having just your hair normal or natural outside of locks. I just like the exaggerated look of locks. Like essentially dreadlocks is just an emulation of straight hair hanging down. So with that being said, it just gives it a more animated look. For example, for me, I like the way cartoon looking hair looks. And I feel like dreadlocks gives me that. <laughs> but man, look at my hair, it's getting really long. It's just cool to see the growth. All right, before we get onto the cons, I am gonna talk about the myths that come with locks and a lot of people think that will happen if you get them. Which actually one of the things that I said was a myth in the beginning was that some people's hair can't lock up. Some people can't get dreadlocks. And that is just a myth, it's not true. Everybody's hair can lock up as long as you know how to properly do it for each hair type. Straight hairs require more of a instant locking method like either twist and rip or crochet hooking, even interlocking. That's all mostly just instant locking methods, even back combing. So if you know how to do it, yes, you can get dreadlocks. And if you go to a loctician and they say that you can't get them, just find the right loctician. And if I were you, I would just learn how to do it myself because then you can make your hair exactly the way that you want it to. And you don't have to spend, you know, $75 to $100 every time you go and get maintenance. And if you were to go and get your hair fully maintained, like washing the hair, retwisting the hair and doing a style, it's gonna cost you about 150 to $200, which believe it or not, I'm actually doing this week and it's gonna be in next week's video, which I'm really excited for because I've never been to a loctician. I've never been to a salon that does dreadlocks. And it's gonna be my first time doing it. The second myth is that locks are smelly and stinky. That's also another myth. 
Your locks will only smell if you're not taking proper care of them. Like if you're not washing it regularly, then obviously oil is gonna get built up on your scalp and oil is what causes the hair to smell. And by oil, I mean your natural skin oils and also sweat that will build up on top of the scalp. And the hair begins to smell when that oil drifts off into your locks and then they'll stay in the locks. That's why it's always important to do washes and frequent detoxes. Another one that I always hear is that you can't comb out dreadlocks. Like recently I did a video on combing out my tips so I can get lit out of them and people were saying that those aren't dreadlocks because you can't comb out dreadlocks and it's just a myth that people have been pumping into you making it think that yeah you can't comb out locks it's a permanent hairstyle and you can't undo it and yeah i came into dreadlocks thinking that it was a permanent hairstyle as well until i found out that oh people are actually combing them out when they don't want them anymore and you can do that, it's possible. My son actually just recently combed out all of his dreadlocks. And the reason people think that it's impossible to comb out the locks is because it used to be impossible. People didn't make videos on combing out their locks. But yeah, I'm here to tell you that you can comb out dreadlocks after you get them. And if you've had them for less than a year, it's gonna be extremely easy to comb them out, but it's all just based on how mature they are. Another thing is if you interlock your hair, it doesn't matter what method you choose to lock up your hair, it can still come out. People say that you can't comb out interlocks and that's just a myth. I had interlocks in my first set of locks and I combed them out perfectly fine. I'm telling you, people will literally say anything and people will believe it. The fourth myth I wanna tell you guys about is that instant locks will damage your hair. So if you use a crochet hook on your hair, it's gonna damage your hair. If you use an interlock tool on your hair, it's gonna damage your hair. And that's completely not true. If you use these tools and you use them properly, your, your hair is gonna turn out completely fine. People like to just say that these tools don't work. It's because they never used them before. And the thing is, if you're using them properly, your hair is gonna turn out perfectly okay. And it's actually gonna turn out exactly how you want it to because you're doing it yourself and you're instantly doing it. So yeah, it's just a huge myth. It's not true. I've done twisting with gel on my hair. I've done crochet hooking on my hair. I've done interlocking on my hair. I've done palm rolling on my hair. I've done sponge rub on my hair. Honestly, I feel like I have some really solid looking locks. Like I don't think there's anything wrong with my hair. There are some that are kind of thin from when I did all my separation, but I mean, they're still healthy. And obviously my hair's still maturing. You see all these buds? Like all of those bumps is just butted up hair and it's just waiting to lock up. So just wait until you see my hair in a year from now, it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna look nice. And of course you see a little bit of frizz up here and that's just natural guys. Like this is to be expected. And the way the frizz looks is all based on your hair type. I have a 3C hair type, so that's what 3C hair type frizz looks like. I do need to go in and separate all these because some of them have combined down by the root, especially in the back. And that actually leads on to my cons. If you're not maintaining your hair frequently, you're gonna end up having locks that you're not wanting. If you're going for the maintained look, like how I am. Like my hair right now doesn't look maintained, it's just because I haven't maintained it in a while. But I think one of the biggest cons that kind of bugs me is all the hate that comes from having dreadlocks. Whether you're white, black, Asian, or Mexican, or any other color, or any other culture, people tend to hate with dreadlocks. Now, I feel like majority of the hate comes to those that have lighter skin, whether they're white, Asian, or Mexican, or even me, like being light-skinned. People hate on that, and I don't get it. It doesn't make sense, and it's just so weird how someone will take time out of their day to leave a comment on a video and say, you're white, you shouldn't have dreadlocks, or white people can't have dreads, or white people don't look good in dreads, or if you have straight hair, you can't have dreadlocks. That's one of the things that kind of bugs me. And of course it doesn't bug me as much because I know that that's never gonna go away. There's gonna always be people out there that hate on silly things, but that is a con that comes with it. I just wanted to let you guys know before you get into it. One of the other cons is the maintenance. Maintenance isn't hard when you only have like 50 to 75 locks, which I had on my first set of locks. I had like 79 or 72. But with me having 150 locks, it makes it so hard to be motivated to do my own maintenance. Of course I still do it, but I don't do it as frequently as I either should or as much as I would like to. Just because instead of it taking me 30 minutes to retwist all my hair, it takes me two to three hours to retwist all my hair. Of course it's still possible. Three hours is if I do a full transformation like detoxing the hair, retwisting the hair, maybe touching up some hair with crochet hook, and that's just like a full detox, three hours. So it takes a little bit more time. You have to be a little bit more patient, and that's one of the things that actually comes out of having locks is you get patient, so that's kind of a pro as well. Another con, doesn't necessarily happen for everybody, but it can happen if you do it improperly, and that is that your scalp can have stress, which could eventually possibly go to hair loss, and that's obviously if you're doing it incorrectly. I need to keep throwing that out there. Like for me, for instance, I'm not doing my hair incorrectly. See my hairline? Like it's still looking full, you know what I mean? Like this is a perfect sign that all the hair is good. Like you see how thick and how dense my scalp is? I'm good. And that's because I don't put a lot of stress at my scalp. I don't do hairstyles every week. I don't do retwists every week. I'm taking care of my scalp. I'm drinking enough water. I'm not 
being unhealthy. It's not to scare you, but I want you to be very careful and be patient. Don't, you know, rush things. And if you're going to a loctician, tell them not to put a lot of tension at the scalp when they do retwists and hairstyles. But if you're doing it yourself, same thing. Don't put a lot of tension at the scalp. If it hurts, if it's hurting down by the scalp and it's not just pulling, but it's actually stress, you feel something like almost like the lock is gonna pop off your head, just undo it, it's it's not worth it. And if there is stress of the scalp, I would recommend actually combing out your roots just a little bit to even out to even out all of your new growth so that one hair isn't just pulling at the scalp because then that can stress out your scalp. Another con is what I'm facing right now and that is that I'm missing all of my other hairstyles. Like I look at videos from two years ago when I had waves and I'm like, yo, I liked the waves, even though they might have not looked the best on me, I just liked them for some reason. I think they looked really cool. It was just very different for me because I've never had waves my entire life until two years ago. So that's kind of hard. Just seeing all my other hairstyles, like when I had a high top fade with like just the curls on top, I think that looked really cool. Yeah, there's just different hairstyles that I miss, but it's not a big deal. I do like my dreadlocks a lot more and it's easier to keep them because I know how much maintenance goes into all the other hairstyles. Like waves is probably the most maintained hair you have to have because you have to constantly be brushing. You have to always wear a do-rag at night. If you're wearing a hat, you have to wear a do-rag. It's just like, there's too much going on. With dreadlocks, like you could throw a hat on, you can throw a beanie on. Of course you might get a little bit of frizz, but it's worth it. Another big thing that I've ran into recently with having a full set of dreads is that sleep can sometimes get uncomfortable. And it's not even on my head, like it's on the other parts of my body that don't have hair. Like, so for instance, my neck gets a lot of like, I don't know, it just gets pokey, gets poked by all my locks uh, with like a little bit of the frizz poking out and poking into my neck. It doesn't hurt, but it's just like kind of itchy. It's like wearing an itchy sweater. You know, it's one of those things you gotta get over. But the best way for me to sleep at night is for me to push all of my hair up, either tie it up or push it up and then lay my head down and then I'm good. Um, obviously a lot of people will wear like a bonnet or a do-rag to go to sleep and that'll help them as well. I just know for me, I don't like anything on my head at night. I'm cool with, you know, maintaining any lint that goes in there, I'll, I'll comb it out or, or pick it out. If I were to do anything, I'd wear a bonnet. So maybe that's something I'll, I'll try out in the future. But you guys, those are my pros and cons and the myths of dreadlocks. This is me having dreadlocks after two years with this set of locks, but I've had four sets of locks within the past eight years and it's been a really cool journey. So hopefully this video helps you out. If you guys don't know already, I do videos strictly on dreadlocks. It's following my journey. I also have a second channel to where I follow other people's journeys. Also, I do reviews on celebrities, dreadlocks, and kind of show you guys how they got their locks as well. But if you're starting dreadlocks, welcome to the dreadlock community. It's really cool. Also, if you do have questions about your locks and your lock journey, you can always leave comments and I'll help you out as best I can through these videos. But I'll see you guys in the next time. Peace.